Okay, uh, my name is Jason Hirschman, and today I will be discussing both my investment strategy and the merits of Goldberg and Johnson, a small Swedish microcap. Before I tell you a little bit about myself, let's talk about who I don't want to be. I don't want to be beaten by some casual investor who spells Buffett with one T, some guy who spends seven minutes a year on his investment portfolio in between picks on NFL draft day, some guy who buys stocks with cool products his bros love, but because he just left them alone, one of them goes fantastically nonlinear after seven years of ownership. Who wants to lose to this person? Well, we serious microcap investors can't control random luck. But at the very least, we can control our own behavior. We should not defeat ourselves. Yet we so often defeat ourselves because hard work and dedication and checklists and channel checks and management calls spur us to overact because we forget that the purpose of research is most often not to buy because we accept mediocrity because it's new mediocrity. Now, a little bit about my background. I'm a full-time investor now, but for 25 years, I was also a full-time business owner. Most of my investing approach comes from hands-on management experience, working with demanding customers, with suppliers in China and Korea, product development, and business lawsuit experience. I've said this before, but there is a big difference between swimming competitively or reading a book about competitive swimming. When you're in the water, you understand how special the better business truly is. What I really prefer are investment setups where the problem is outside of daily operations. This is the dumb cousin to the distressed debt, good business, bad balance sheet, loan to own strategy. If I can make money from a management team not having to change, that's awesome. What I want is perception to change as management executes. Now, many investors want easy to understand stories, the classic elevator pitch. In contrast, I want a tough pitch today that can morph into a much easier pitch because business success makes perceived problems melt away. Not to say that I'm looking for complexity. Complex businesses tend to stay complex. I'm looking for something or someone unusual or weird that could be later be interpreted as special or genius. Now, Throw away your emotional support checklist when hunting huge multi-baggers. It's not going to help. One challenge with huge multi-baggers is that they often don't match conventional patterns you find in typical checklists. Even in microcap land, if it's a good match for checklists or screens, it's probably already attracted a lot of attention. Investors love chasing past success, past winning patterns. Investors looking for consensus, qualitative or quantitative, Factors fish in crowded ponds. You have to get comfortable with the uncomfortable, the different, the immature. Now, it amazes me how often investors treat microcap investing like small cap investing. Investors love predictable businesses and pay a premium for those types of businesses. But in microcaps, what can appear unpredictable may just be a side effect of too few resources at the current time. How many resources does a microcap spend today for internal controls, reporting, financial analysis, low reporting quality for operations or shareholders can effectively mask the intrinsic quality of a business. It can camouflage the true abilities of top management. The issue is wider than just internal controls or reporting. Microcaps, particularly nanocaps, are often undermanned versions of Adam Smith's Pin factory, in which 18 distinct operations are performed by many distinct hands. As microcap CEOs carve out specific functions like sales and marketing from their direct participation, we have an early view in how a young company may successfully or unsuccessfully handle further specialization. All of this affects not only the results, but the perception of the business in the eyes of your fellow investors. Instead of asking a CEO what he's doing more of, I like to inquire what he's personally doing less of. Then you have to hold on to the eventual multi-bagger. How do you do it? One way is to consciously resist recency bias. 
As investors, we're suckers for new information, new data, the most recent quarterly results, a nugget from that last chat with the CEO. But is it news or is it noise? Why do we weigh the most recent so heavily, especially when we know progress is not in the year in microcaps, and it's often two steps forward, one step backward? My approach is to be skeptical when the most recent opinion strongly deviates from the average of multiple previous opinions. It's all about staying in a great stock and not selling out prematurely. It's too hard to get back in at a substantially higher price. Few people can do it. Let's take a closer look at two investments of mine that I filed 13 Gs, Expel and Liad. Here are two wishes I have for you. May all your dreams come true and may all your strong opinions be lightly held. Follow the second and the first is a cinch. I have to admit that my first opinion of Expel was that paint protection film seemed like a silly rich man's niche product, a high priced car con. Thank goodness I have a strong network of investor friends, friends with financial benefits, and the inclination to find the answers to the crucial whys. When you see something that works, even if it seems weird or silly, you have to find out why. Actually, especially if it seems weird or silly. It's important to note that Expel never lost a lot of money under Ryan Pay since their flirtation with bankruptcy and never resorted to chronic share secondaries. It's also fun to see how the perception of Ryan as CEO has morphed from better than average to superstar as he's built a larger, effective team around himself. Today, Liat sells head-to-toe -to -head -to motocross and bicycle protection and accessories. When I first got involved, their predominant product was a neck brace for riders. It looks like a toilet bowl seat you put around your neck. Somehow, this company was going to expand beyond technical toilet seats to fashion forward segments of the rider market, yet they did it. What is personally humbling to me is at the same time I was making perhaps the most crucial decisions of my investment career to hold my Expel shares after they quadrupled and more, post the 3M lawsuit and a quality control problem, I also made perhaps the worst investment decision of my career. You see, I owned more than 5% of Liat, selling out in late 2018 and early 2019. Less than three years later, Liat is a near 10 bagger from that sell price. Now, how can one simultaneously make the best and worst decisions for one's investment career? Perhaps it's understandable, but instead of evaluating Liat's improvement on an absolute level, I kept comparing its progress with Expel. It was an unfair, unnecessary, and ultimately costly comparison. Liat was priced for anything but great success, so I had the luxury of waiting, but my own impatience, unreasonable demands, and false narratives cost me more than $7 million to gains. An expensive lesson. Okay, it's time for a stock pitch. Let's talk about Goldberg and Yachts. This company has a ridiculous name, I know. It sounds like an ambulance chasing law firm. Goldberg and Yachtsen is the kind of company I'd like. Superior business model, economics, and management held by, by a combination of temporary factors and current investor anxiety. Goldberg and Janssen focuses on serving two markets in Sweden and the Nordics, the historic core business or pool accessories in Sweden. Now they're adding additional products for the upscale home and garden consumer and a service offering, which is very exciting. In 2021, Goldberg purchased Nomeco AB, a distributor of electric light work vehicles in Sweden, Denmark, and Norway. Since then, they've added the regional distributor rights to other environmentally friendly commercial work products. Now, many microcap investors are familiar with Bioscient and Paladin, which built impressive businesses in licensing drugs for Canada. In licensing can take many shapes. Combining a strong marketing organization with proven products is always a powerful formula. Okay, some key figures. Goldberg and Janssen did 435 million Swedish krona, second, trailing 12 months, roughly equivalent to 40 million. $41 million US. EV dividend is less than six, yet the company prints a 40% ROIC. 
if you include the intangibles, and closer to 100% if you subtract them. The free, the, excuse me, the free cash flow yield is about 10%. Clearly, the market is priced in this company as a COVID-19 play, massively overburdened. Now, for the first time, Mr. Market and I respectfully disagree. Goldberg and Janssen's bread and butter have been pool heat pumps and pool roof enclosures. Many of us in North America are familiar with pool gas heaters. Those bad boys use propane or natural gas to quickly heat pools regard regardless of the ambient temperature. Pool heat pumps need the ambient temperature above 50 degrees Fahrenheit and heat the pool slowly over a couple of days. However, they're much more energy efficient and they produce no carbon dioxide, so they're much better for the environment. Goldberg and Janssen are the premium price models and they are the leader in their market. The first to use R32 in refrigerant in Sweden, and they offer excellent support and service to pool installers and pool owners. It's a key attribute of the Goldberg and Janssen story, offering better service and support. According to management, more than 80% of new pools in Sweden use some kind of pool heating product. The second largest component of their pool business are high-end pool enclosures. The rest are pool covers, liners, robots, etc. The company is also going to introduce a new line of pool products for next season, but it's a secret for now. It's important to note that in-ground pools are not like jacuzzis or cheap metal above-ground pools. During COVID, the jacuzzi market exploded in Sweden, and many pool retailers are doing a 50-50 mix between jacuzzis and, and pools. Now retailers are doing close to a 595 mix between jacuzzi and pools. Middle pool sales have dived too. In-ground pools are much more expensive, 35,000 US dollars and higher. They take planning and permits and often experience a construction bad bulk. It's a major commitment. The jacuzzi market was a COVID-19 bump and is suffering terribly from higher energy prices in Sweden. Fortunately, the nature of the commitment and customer demographics insulates Goldberg and Janssen from a higher percentage of the COVID-19 and energy inflation distortions. There are definite headwinds at the moment, but Mr. Market may be throwing out the Swedish baby with a pool water, so to speak. I know what you're thinking. How can, this pool how can the pool season in Sweden last from May to September? The Gulf Stream affects the bottom half of Sweden, creating milder temperatures than what would be expected given Sweden's northern latitude. Fortunately, most of the population and almost all of the pool market is in the bottom half. It's not Florida or Nevada, but mild summers and lots of summer daylight allow for a respectable pool market. Goldberg and Janssen's Nomeco division is an example of what I label second wave electrification. There's no denying a secular wave towards climate sensitivity and lower greenhouse emissions. In North America, we often view Tesla and other emerging auto companies as the way to bet on electrification. Here's another way to talk to the problem. The phased out of diesel and petrol work vehicles, power tools, industrial mowers, and chemical weed control. Selling to municipalities and nonprofits are also a nice way to hedge some pool market volatility. People, you don't have to pay 10 times revenue to ride an electrification wave. You can barely pay more than one time revenue for this company and get real profits. There's no doubt that Goldberg and Janssen has benefited to a degree from a COVID-19 tailwind. First level thinking is repelled by over in place. Second level thinking asks how fast a company can power through that challenge. Even with higher interest rates, even with higher energy prices, this company has a lot of irons in the fire to overcome some pool business headwinds. Now, GJAB, Goldberg and Janssen, is switching to IFRS in the third quarter so these trailing 12 months earning numbers include substantial acquisition amortization. The numbers are better, even if you exclude them. Plus, management did two price increases, May and July, which will help too. It just takes time for the increase to filter through in their model because the commitments to buyers last year were building their pools this year. For what it's worth, management is not seeing much weakness in their, cool business, in their, in their core pool business as of yet. Now, if you've heard me pitch Galaxy Gaming in the past, you know I really like high-dose margin. But you know what? 
I really like moderate gross margins too, when they're paired with the right business and market economics. Selling a product that is a modest percentage of the overall purchase price to higher end customers, to distributors, and offering them great service and support. Combine that with an asset like balance sheet and strong management. Well, that's a setup I know and like very, very much. Here's a Mark Andressen inspired slide. Microcaps are too small to have true moats, but I like the idea of defensibility. I particularly like distribution defensibility. How often do we hear about a microcap legitimately staking claim to distribution leadership? It's almost always a supposed better product or service that needs to displace a larger established competitor. One thing I've learned from studying Expel is that customers who think you're fun and competent stick with you. If you can make automotive, plastic film, or pool heat pumps fun for your direct customer, that says something. Okay, so what is this company worth? What kind of upside is possible? Well, if you're a Euro or Krona Uber bear, if you think the housing market is going to collapse, if you think Europe is doomed, this isn't the stock for you. If you don't want to patiently chip away at a position, if you need to buy $3 million of the stock, this is too illiquid and too small a float for you. Only a handful of you can join me on this journey. If you prefer an Excel model, which is precisely wrong, rather than a back of the envelope calculation, which may be roughly right, Goldberg and Johnson is not for you. With apologies to British design guru Paul Bennett, successful microcap investing can be characterized as a quote, fleeting glimpse of the bleeding obvious. Microcap investing offers us soft clues, any of which can be dismissed, but collectively can be powerful indicators. Students of investing know that the pool industry has been a wellspring of previous multi-backers like distribution giant Poolport in the USA and pool robot maker Matronix in Israel. Goldberg and Janssen is leveraging its pool industry connections to widen distribution of the old fire grill. We see the initial fruits of Nordic Relax Spas being installed near GJAP's headquarters. More crucially, Nomeka was now marketing the Oleatec weed control and all track electric mower machinery at Green Road Show locations in Sweden and to existing customers. I think we'll know inside of a year whether these new divisions of products are successful and get a better sense of how successful. Admittedly, the extent of the COVID-19 bounce, energy inflation, and a software housing market in Sweden complicates matters. But behind the fog of near-term macro issues is a very profitable business trading at a low multiple given its economics. Look, it's a scary moment for housing-related industries given higher interest rates and energy prices. But the pool business is historically a great market. People will want pools in the future. They will want their pool water to be temperate and comfortable and they will want their pools covered. There are a lot of shots on goal. There's a lot of optionality. The way I look at it, 2023, and to a lesser de degree, 2024, could be challenging for the pool side of the business, but, moment but momentum in the professional green space, the electric work vehicles, is going to be helpful. I am expecting a roughly 50-50 split between pool revenue and everything else in 2025, or a bit later, depending on the economy. Even without the benefit of further acquisitions, which I think are likely, or a shift from the spotlight exchange, which could happen in a couple of years, I see a lot of upside for investors. Right now, this seems like a strange business. Give it a few more years. We'll be referring to Goldberg and Johnson as a special business. Now, thank you for listening to my presentation today. Uh, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter microcap club or email. Thanks again.